All right, guys, it's me, Madman, here. And I figured it was about time I made a video update for BBR Chicago 2023. So uh, it's been a long time coming. I apologize. I've been very busy. But um, we are one month away from BBR Chicago. So it's time to get excited. Um, once again, the event is June 23rd, 24th, and 25th. That's a Friday through Sunday. Um, so it's going to be at the Hampton Inn and Suites, which is uh, Addison, Illinois. I'll include the full um, address in the description of this video, as well as a uh, reservation link that's special for our our group. It has a discounted rate for the for the hotel. We did get a block of rooms. So um, if you want to use that link to get your room reserved, go right ahead. That will probably be the easiest way to do it. You will have to manually uh, adjust the dates in there. So if you're arriving, like say you need a room for Thursday night, the night before the first game, uh, you will have to put Thursday through Sunday. It's pretty standard for any, uh, if you've done any, a hotel reservation before online. So shouldn't be too complicated. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, let's, I got a lot to talk about here in terms of, you know, the version of BBR we're playing, the point system, which is going to be the same. Don't worry, nothing crazy there. Um, supplies, prizes, um, uh, etiquette stuff, and team drawing, all that kind of stuff. We are not doing team drawing in this video yet. It's, we're a month away, so don't even ask. <laughs> uh, we will do it. I'll give you a little spoiler here. We are going to do it a week before the event. Uh, it'll be live. Me and Moose Cow will do it. So uh, let's get right into the details here. Me and Moose Cow uh, are putting together this event. Uh, it's going to be the first ever BBR Chicago tournament. And we are going to be using um, the latest uh, version of BBR, uh, which is out. So uh, Sired has put out, Sireblood, the creator of the game, has put out some tentative new changes that are coming for the next version of BBR. Um, and currently those are not totally official. Um, they are subject to change between now and the time of the BBR Chicago tournament. Um, but it sounds like it does, I don't want to speak for him or anybody else, but I, it does sound like a lot of these are going to be adopted. Um, there might be some fine tuning afterwards. So I will include also a summary of these changes in the description of this video. I will go over some of those as well, but I want to get to some other details first. So uh, the registration for the BBR Chicago uh, event um, is $90. That $90 goes towards basically reserving the room, like the, the playing space we're going to be using. Uh, as well as three hot lunches, eat all three days, so Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So basically, that's what it goes towards. Everything else, me and Moose Car are taken care of. So um, we'll figure it out from there. Um, I know I'm going to forget tons of details with this, but um, if you have not registered by now, please do so. Uh, we do, we can do at least 16 teams. We could do up to 20 if we had to, or wanted to rather. Uh, right now we have about 11 or 12 teams and I say 11 or 12 just because we have some players in our roster that are free agents and they can kind of float around to, from team to team if we need it and we do need an even amount of teams so that the bracket works out well we can't have an odd amount of teams so we do have about three or four free agents which could sort of go wherever we need them to go to make that even even amount of teams um so yeah um I'm trying to think i it's kind of late here, so I'm trying to remember. I'm a little tired. Um, but yeah, I'll probably just spit out what I remember as I record this video. Uh, some of those new changes, I'm going to go over those right now, um, that Sired has put forth, um, will be implemented here. So um, whatever the latest version is by June 22nd, the day before the tournament, that's what we're going to use for BBR Chicago. Um, so let's go over some of those. There's going to be a new turn order. So if you haven't seen uh, Sired's video already, there's going to be a new turn, or turn order, and it's going to be Germany, Japan going first. Uh, U.S., U.K. right after, followed by China, Italy, Commonwealth, and France, uh, and then Russia to end the turn order. So you know what that means. That means that Germany and Japan for that first round can essentially go at the same time because their moves will not overlap each other. Um, so um, there, a lot of time can be saved right there by uh, Germany and Japan going at the same time. And essentially, the U.S. and U.K. could do the same thing on the first round, too, provided that their moves do not overlap with each other. And I, you guys know what I mean by that. You know, 
uh, aircraft landing in certain territories that were just taken and whatnot. So no need to go into the access and allies rules. You guys all know what that is if you're going to an event like this. So that's the big one. Um, some of the other ones are national objective changes, um, big ones to the U.S. for that matter, um, and then some victory point changes. So um, I'll go over a few of them real quick. Japan, uh, their Burma NO is gone. Uh, the UK will get a $5 NO if Portugal is allied. So for all you players who love to go to Gibraltar via Spain as the Axis, well, you're going to have to watch out because there's five more dollars coming at you. Uh, the U.S. has basically all their NOs have been overhauled, except for card number 69, which is the one that has to do with Normandy and Paris. Uh, so I think the U.S. gets $5 if they have units in either of those territories. Um, they now have an, uh, an ally, sorry, an island NO like Japan does. So they get plus three IPCs for Iwo Jima, Okinawa, Palau, Marshall Islands, uh, Caroline Islands, Taiwan, and the Marianas, and I believe Hainan, and Hainan is involved in that as well. So um, pretty cool stuff there for the U.S. Um, they get $5 uh, for at least one land unit in Casablanca. That's another one. They get $10 for no longer being neutral, $10 each turn. And they get $1 for every original controlled territory uh, that they have. So they start with 17 control territory. So that's $17 right there if they don't lose the Philippines in the first round. If they do lose the Philippines, it's $16. Um, and then here's the big one right here. Um, so the uh, United States will get a one-time payment on their collect income phase if they enter the war. Uh, and, and turn one, they'll get no, they'll get no one-time bonus. Turn two, they'll get a $10 bonus one time. Turn three or higher, $30 bonus. So for all you guys, Japan players like to keep the U.S. out till round four, well, you might have to think about that a little bit harder. So that's that's what's on the docket right now for the U.S. And in terms of victory point changes, the Pacific Islands, our point is up to five islands instead of four. Uh, Imperial, the Imperial point is at 55 now instead of 52. And Atlantic Wall is at five units instead of four. So... Again, all of these changes, uh, sorry, all of these uh, updates are subject to change between now and the start of BBR Chicago. Um, you know, there's a lot of games going on on the side right now, YouTube games, and people are, are reporting back what they're finding, and some of these can be tweaked a little bit. So that's not up to me, that's above my pay grade. So, <laughs> um, so what else do I want to include here? Um, I got some notes here on my computer. I got my computer, you can't see it. Um, like I said, I'll include a full list of these changes in the description, as well as the reservation link, like I mentioned. Uh, the point system. So point system is the same as every year. Um, if you've been to the Atlanta and uh, St. Louis tournaments, it's the same deal. Um, you know, uh, Axis win if they have 12 victory points or more. Allies win if they keep the Axis to 11 points or less. Um, there will be a victory bonus um, for 20 points. So that was uh, in play, I believe, at St. Louis. So if you're the Axis and you win with 12 victory points, you get the 12 points for the victory points you just got, and then you get a 20-point uh, bonus for winning. So that would put you at 32. But uh, the Allies do get one point for each original Axis territory that they've taken away from the Axis. So let's say in that same scenario, the Allies took away three um, original Axis territories. That would put the final score at 32 minus 3, 29 so the Axis win would end at 29 points uh, for, for all of those modifiers. So that's how that would work. And in, the same, in that same example, the Allies then uh, would have lost, and they would have gained just three, uh, three points for the three territories they took. So um, same, same point system as all the other years. Nothing new to report there. Uh, no, something that is new to report is forfeiting. So there will not be forfeiting. There will not be a negative bonus or a positive bonus. If a team decides to forfeit um, in round six because they're getting slaughtered, well, there's not going to be a bonus to the team that won that game or there's not going to be a negative bonus to the team that's forfeiting. We're not allowing forfeiting. Uh, that's outlawed. So if you forfeit and don't play your game till the end, you will not be allowed at another BBR Chicago. So... Got to lay down the iron fist there on that one. Um, I think it's 
somewhat disrespectful to the people coming out of town and spending all their time and money to uh, in three days to play this game and to have it cut short. You know, you should play it out to the end no matter what. Um, and that shows a little bit, of, it shows some honor too. So um, lose and win with grace is what I say. So no forfeiting. That is the rule for BBR Chicago. Um, in terms of supplies that will be there, you know, we're going to have all our tables, maps, hit dice, manuals, pieces. They will not be dipped, of course, because this is our first year. And you're going to, if you're used to the dipped pieces, like in Atlanta and St. Louis, well, uh, you're going to be roughing it here in Chicago. So um, we'll have NO cards and IPCs and whatnot. Uh, some people are going to be bringing their own sets of pieces from their own games and hit dice just because we're kind of we kind of have a shoestring budget for this so please be respectful because you may end up using uh some other people's pieces and just be respectful don't throw them on the floor or, you know be disrespectful or whatnot i i don't anticipate any of that happening you guys are all great guys i know most of you i know about 90 to 95 percent of the people coming to this thing so i'm not too worried about that but i have to say it just for those who are uh, new to the tournament. Um, and a big shout out to Matt Todd. Uh, Matt Todd is going to be supplying uh, the roundels, all the roundels, the Victory Point roundels, the Tech roundels, and the National roundels for this tournament. So uh, he is manu personally manufacturing these. So big uh, round of applause for Matt Todd. Um, and another shout out to Rich at Combat Miniatures. He's going to be supplying pri some prizes here for BBR Chicago. Um, I don't have a full list of those right now. Uh, I can't give you any spoilers, but he will be supplying some prizes. So we really do appreciate that. We appreciate Rich and Combat Miniatures for that. Um, so, um, sorry, I'm brain farting here. I'm just looking at everything I got here. Oh, I forgot to mention, the hotel does have um, uh, Continental Breakfast. So... And from what, I, from what I'm told, it's a hot breakfast, so it's not just like a bagel and a bottle of water. So, um, so that's good. So you guys can save some money on that, and uh, should be good there. I, I've been to the hotel twice just to take measurements and look around, and it's a pretty nice hotel. So I think you guys will be um, pretty uh, satisfied with that. Um, in terms of timing uh, for each table, so um, just like you know, again, like the point system. Same thing at um, the last other tournaments, you know, uh, Atlanta and St. Louis. Each team will have six hours, um, and we will have chess clocks at every table. They'll have six hours apiece at each table, so 12 hours total between the two teams to complete their games. Uh, once the clock starts, it's it does not stop. It doesn't stop for bathroom breaks, smoke breaks, you know, strategy talks, anything. Whatever you got to do on your time, you do on your time. And be respectful of your other opponent's time as well. So don't go magically missing to the bathroom, both both of you guys, or all three of you guys, while your team's waiting for you to roll your defense rolls. Uh, if 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 your opponents start complaining about that kind of behavior, um, they'll bring it up to me or Moose Cow, and we'll have to have a talk with you. And if it gets worse, if it gets you know if it doesn't get corrected, then you're out. So I, I got to be like that. I'm sorry, but. We just don't want that kind of behavior and people gaming the time just to screw over opponents. We want this to be a respectful, honorable game. So um, please be respectful of each other's time. We will have the chess clocks. Like I said, no stopping it for tech or anything. The, t the clock will always be going. And the games will start at 8 a.m. That's the time I have right now for it. Um, if, you're, if you would like to start earlier, go for it. Uh, I can't give you more time uh, each because I want to keep everything fair. Each team will have 12 hours, but if you want to start earlier, go for it. Uh, I believe we have the room open at 7.30. Another quick note, too. Um, I think I mentioned this before, too. Since Germany and Japan are first in the turn, turn order, uh, technically separate turns, that those first couple turns, you could really take them at the same time and really save a lot of time. So please be cognizant of that. And when it's not your turn, please be preparing for your turn. Do not wait until your turn to start thinking about what you're going to do, what you're going to buy, what start talking with your opponents. You should be talking with your opponent, or sorry, talk, talking with your teammates. You should be talking with your teammates and planning as the game is going so you can save time. You don't want to lose a game to being timed out. That's the worst way to lose. So um, make sure you're on the ball. Um, if you've played this game before, and in a, especially in a tournament setting, you know this already. So I'd you know, I'm just preaching to the choir at this point. Um, in terms of etiquette, um, 
this comes up every single year with the whole calculator question. Um, uh, I'm of two minds about calculators. Um, I think it's a crutch um, if you have to use it all the time. Um, I'm not in theory against, against it on a personal level, but at the same time at a tournament, I don't think you should be using them. Um, it, you know, but it's a hard thing to enforce. You know, someone, what's to stop someone to take their cell phone in the bathroom and punch some numbers? You know, <laughs> you really can't enforce it unless there's, <laughs> unless I hire somebody with a scary mask to follow you around. I mean, but that'd be kind of funny. Maybe, maybe uh, BBR Chicago 2 will do that. Um, <laughs> I'm joking, of course. Um, but um, I think the best way to handle this is that um, if your opponents are seeing an issue with it, then it's a pro then it's a problem. So, for example, if, if you're using a calculator here and there and your opponents are not bothered by it, then fine. Then you can't get mad if they're using one, too. That's how I see it. So if your opponents do bring it up and they bring it up to me or Moosecow, then it's a problem and you're not doing it anymore. And if that you'll get your first warning. If I have to warn you another time, that's it. You're out. It's, that's, it's your forfeit. So essentially, it's a, a forfeit by force, which means forfeits are outlawed. They're, they're, thereby, you're not allowed to be BBR Chicago again. That's how I look at calculators. Uh, overall, I would say as a general rule, do not use them. But if you are, if you don't go crazy with it, because then your opponents are going to be mad about mad at you, and it's just going to make the game ugly. But in terms of electronic devices like computers, laptops, or any other funky device, those are strictly prohibited. So no computers, no no laptops at the table. Cell phones, everyone's got a cell phone. That's a hard thing to outlaw. Like fine, but nothing else. Nothing else. No laptops, no computers, no, I don't know. I don't know what else, what other devices people would want to bring to a game like this. But um, those you have to keep in your backpack, your hotel room, your car, wherever. Yeah, and then team drawing. Um, like I said, we're going to do that last week, uh, or sorry, the week before the event. Me and Moose Cow will probably do, maybe do like a live drawing or something. Day one, uh, day one scores will impact day two uh, seating. And then day one and day two scores together will impact day three seating for the medal rounds. Now, uh, I don't know if any of you have been following. I'm sure if any of you, you, any of you have been to the Atlanta and uh, St. Louis tournaments in the last year, they have implemented a new day three format, which I love and we plan to implement as well. So the highest uh, score after day one and day two uh, will get to pick which table they're playing at, which medal they are playing for. For day three, eight teams will be playing for the medal rounds. So there'll be two teams playing for gold, two for silver, two for bronze, two for iron. And the top player, the sorry, the top um, team, top scoring team from day one and day two will get the first pick of which table they're going to play at. So they may pick up to play at gold, they may pick to play at silver, they may pick to play for iron for some weird reason. Um, so It'll go on down the line from there, and it will be done in front of everyone so that everyone can see who's picking what table, and that will impact your decision as well. Uh, so let's say the top scoring team picks the gold table, as they should. The day, uh, second second highest scoring team will say, huh, I, maybe they'll say, I, I don't know if we can beat those guys. Let's play it safe, and let's play for silver. So they'll go to the silver table, and we'll just go down the line until we get to the eighth team. So that's how we'll do it. That's how... Uh, St. Louis and Atlanta has done it, and I love it. It's great. It adds another element of suspense and surprise to that day three, and it gets more people involved because there's four medals being played for, and there's eight teams. So, um, yeah, I think we're definitely going to do it for Chicago as well. Oh, I wanted to take sort of a poll for those of you watching and those of you attending and maybe not attending, what you think of this idea. Um, obviously, the day one draws are usually always just random draw right? Which I have no problem with doing that. Um, but another alternate idea I came up with um, was what if you had it where you did not have medal round winners from the from the past, from, sorry, from the previous St. Louis tournament, so St. Louis 2023 and Atlanta 2022. None of those medal round winners from any either of those tournaments can play each other on the first round. And the reason I say that is because you don't, it's, it, one thing that kind of stinks about having the random draws, you're always going to see two really good teams go at it the first round, and one of those teams that's good is going to lose, and it's really going to impact their score and their ability to go far into day three for the medal rounds. Um, overall, the system the way it is is fair. You know, top axis team plays top allied team 
on day two, and so on. Second highest axis place, second highest allied. Fine. Um, and that's perfectly fine. But another idea I'm, think, I'm thinking about is having where you could no medal round winners play each other on day one so that none of them lose on day one, sort of. So, so you see uh, a better trajectory for those teams going forward into day three. So I guess I'll take a poll with all of you, maybe just shoot a comment or whatever and say, hey, I don't like that idea, it's terrible. Or hey, let's just keep it the way it is. I'm perfectly fine with that, honestly. If it's inconclusive, I'm just sticking with the old way um, of just keeping it the way it is, so that's fine. You know, no hard feelings. Just an idea I'm throwing out there. Don't take it too serious. Don't get all, get, don't get a fire under your ass or anything. So that's all I got for you guys. Uh, I'm sure I forgot like 90 million things, but um, that's what I've got so far. So again, BBR Chicago is June 23rd through 25th. Um, book your rooms, get those booked right away. I do, well, do have the reservation link in the description. I do have the hotel address in the link, or sorry, in the description. Registration fee is $90. We do have um, 11 or 12 teams already. We can definitely get more. I do have the summary of the latest BBR changes in the description as well. So, uh, and you can contact me or Moose Cow uh, for any questions. Um, I'll put my uh, Gmail address in there as well. We're always on the WhatsApp chat for the BBR Chicago. Uh, there's a BBR Chicago separate chat. Um, and you can just send a comment on YouTube as well. So. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, but I'll be doing more videos as the time nears. I'm going to try and do one each week. I think that's what I'm going to do uh, as we get closer to the event. So, all right, later guys.